All right, we are looking at Bridges Math, fifth grade, unit two, called More Writing Fractions. This is your homework, and this looks pretty fun, to be honest, because we are going to be filling in these clocks in bars to help us add things together. So let's get at it. I'm going to skip A, because I think half and three-eighths, I think you can do that on your own. Let's do B. Let's move into that one. So we're going to do three-fourths and three-eighths. And there are eight bars here. So for you, probably three eighths is pretty simple. You just do three out of eight. The question is, how do we do three fourths? And we need to look at this and we need to split it into fourths. So if I did that, now I have four sections, right? One, two, three, four. And to do three fourths, I'm going to color in three of those four sections. One, two, three. So there it is. And then how do we add them together? Well, over here, I have six out of eight, three fourths is the same as six out of eight, like so. And I would encourage you to use colored pencils for this. And then three eighths, I need to go one, two, and I have one more. So what do we have here? We have, um, let's do it two ways. You could do what some people call an improper fraction, which is nine eighths, you have nine out of eight, or you could do the mixed number. So you have one whole and then one eighth also. So again, most of these, I think, are going to be similar to this uh, B, um, except maybe A would be less than 1. Um, so you only have one answer for that. And now uh, we're going to do the same with clocks. So th look at these clocks. Okay. I'm going to move down to F because this is a little bit more challenging. Um, Three-fourths. Um, a fourth of a shape is pretty easy, right? You do half, and then half of a half is a fourth. So there's a fourth. And then thirds are a little trickier. So I want you to think about how many um, parts of, their, of the clock are there? Well, there's 12 parts, right? Because there are 12 hours um, on a clock. And for thirds, we need three equal groups. So think about 12 divided by three. So it's going to be one, two, three, four sections would make a third. So you've got that. And then another one, two, three, four. There are your thirds. And then you need two of those thirds colored in. Now, hold up one second. This is supposed to be three fourths, not one fourth. So three fourths. Okay, got it. Let's move on over. We're going to add these together now. All right, so let me do my three fourths first. There it is. Now I need to add this um, two thirds to it. And an easier way to think about it for this part is how many sections are there out of 12? So it's four and four. There's eight sections out of 12. So I need to get eight more colored in. So here's three more. And then five more. I think it would be like that. So the answer here, you have one whole, and this is going to be 5 out of 12, right? So it's a mixed number. You have 1 in 5 twelves. These are a little bit tricky, so let's do one more, and we'll do the next one. So 5, 6. Right? Remember how we did thirds? We did it like this, yeah? There's thirds. And a sixth is half of a third. So if we cut our thirds in half, then we have sixth. So there's my 5, 6. Again... Three fourths, we can do that one pretty easily. There it is, but now we've got to put them together, right? Five sixths and three fourths. So I'll start with my five sixths, the bigger one. So there are my five sixths, and I, how many sections do I need to do? This is three fourths, but if you're looking at the twelfths, there are nine of the twelves filled in. So I need to fill in nine more twelves. So if I fill in uh, two of them here to finish this off, I would need seven more twelfths on the next one over. And then to do that, I just think seven o'clock would be seven twelfths, right? So then you're going to have your one, and then seven twelfths would be that one. So then, again, try E and H on your own, um, kind of using that same method we use for F and G. And now we're going to look at a couple story problems. We'll try to do these quickly. And since we've been working with clocks, I'm going to show you another way to think about these that might make it um, simpler for you. 
So Abby and Lauren preparing for a dance and they uh, practice for two thirds of an hour and also five sixths of an hour. So how much did they practice all together? So we're adding those together. And here's your trick to um, think about this. So we know two thirds looks like this and we know five sixths looks like this. So the trick is how many minutes would this be? And this would be what? That's 30, 35, 40 minutes. And here we have almost all the way around. There's only 10 minutes open, so this is 50 minutes. And you can quickly figure out how many minutes it is total. And if you remember one hour is 60 minutes, you could also say it's one hour and so many minutes. Or you could even say it is one and some fraction hours. There's lots of ways to do it if you're thinking about it like that. Next one, we got the same idea. Now we've got 11 twelfths and we have two thirds again, same. So we already know two thirds is uh, 40 minutes, right? In 11 twelfths, look at this. We've got everything except five minutes filled in. So that's 55 minutes. And of course, if you want to add fractions in another way, you can, but that's one way I like to think about that. And now we have this uh, challenge here. So again, the challenge, if you get stuck, that's okay. It's a challenge. Try your best, but I will help you through it a little bit. And we're looking at what happens if we add two fractions that are both greater than a half. I would start with three examples before we figure that out. So what are some fractions greater than a half? We'll keep it very simple. I know two-thirds and three-fourths and five-sixths are all greater than half, so what happens when I add those together? Well, there I get four-thirds, which is also one and a third. And there I get six-fourths, which is going to be a mixed number two, and five-sixths you can do on your own. But what we're looking for, the sum must be either greater than one or less than one. So what's true for that one? Is it greater than one or less than one? Same thing down here. Let's add some very simple fractions. So I know one-third, one-fifth, and one-tenth, they're all less than one-half. So what happens when we add these together? Well, we have numbers like this. And again, we're looking at the same thing we looked at before. Are these sums here that we're getting, are they greater than one or are they less than one? So look at those, and then that's what your answer is for that. So this was your... Um, home connection, more adding fractions from Bridges Grade 5, and thank you, and goodbye.